Yes, sir. It is I, your boy from Best Eye, and I greatly appreciate everybody tuning in for Don't F Up the Crime Scene, where me, special guests, would tune in and talk about our experiences on crime scenes and how to mess up the case. All right? So sit back and enjoy, and holler back at your boy. Holler. What's up, guys? It's I, your boy from Best Eye, coming again. One time for Don't Fuck Up Waves and stuff like that. So before we get all that stuff done, let's get a, a sponsor, Tomahawk Traps. Tomahawk Traps. You know, me and Kyle go way back. He's way up there in Wisconsin. If you need a live trap, anything live, humane trap, contact Tomahawk Traps. You can use my submitter code, D-C-H-E-A-R-S-T. That's D-C-H-E-A-R-S-T. It's my last name. You get 10% off anything that Kyle got. All right? So that's Tomahawk Traps. And now we're our sponsor for today. All right, let me get it here. And I got Todd Stosi, right? I got that right, right? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, Todd, okay yeah, you know, I'll be dogging names and chopping them up, stuff like that and everything, you know. So, again, I got Todd Stosi, and we're going to go with uh, episode, I believe, this is, guys, don't 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 get on me. This is episode, oh, my goodness, 60, this is 67. Oh, my God, 67. I'm trying to get up there with Dan, because, you know, Dan's, he's way ahead of, he got like 150, 160, something like that. I'll catch him now. All right, so uh, Todd Stosi's been working for forever, like 20 years, 18, as manager for Animal Law Enforcement Division of Santa Cruz uh, County Animal Shelter. He's been doing that. That's in Cali. That's out there in California. I've never been. We got to talk about that. And um, he has a, a BS in criminal justice, a, a BS in psychology. He's been training animal uh, law enforcement officers, Leo, sheriffs, uh, prosecutors all across the United States for about 15 years. He's worked with HSUS Code, Code 3 and um, former NACA president. Uh, he's been doing all this for for forever. And it seems like he's an expert on how to um, write a good warrant for search and arrest warrant. So, Todd, welcome to the show. And I really appreciate you coming on, man. No problem. I appreciate you having me. You know, uh, like, yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. <clears throat> Pleasure's all mine. Because I think uh, Liam Hughes, you know Liam? Oh, yeah. Liam and I go way back. So, so yeah, he talks you up a lot. I was like, I was like, who? He says, California guy. He looks like a hippie. He's like, a, um, I, I said, I said, oh, I've seen him before. I've seen him before. He wears like a a, 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 a sweatshirt a lot. And then like that, they said, yep. yeah, that's him. That's him. I, I said, sandals, okay. Sweatshirt sandals. <laughs> that's your uniform? <laughs> No, no, I, I wear a full uniform when I'm working, but uh, yeah, when I'm doing the speaker circuit or just hanging out, it's definitely sweatshirt and sandals. Oh, that's you. That, so yeah, yeah. We, we so I think I should see you at um, either Texas Unites or one of those. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I see you all the time. <laughs> What's call it? So first, we go through the easy eights, like I said before, and this is Don't Fuck the Crime Scene, episode sixty-seven. So first thing is, um, what's the best thing you like about your job? Oh, that is a good question. I, I mean, I would say I've been doing this 20 years, yeah. and every single day is something different. Yeah. Um, you know, this just this week we did a, a cockfighting warrant, um, and I ended up, for the first time ever, having to do a drone warrant. Um, because when, when I did my initial warrant, it had a lot of really bad players in it, a lot of Nortenos, a lot of big guns involved. And the sheriff was like, you know what? We don't feel comfortable just barging in that place. Can you get us a drone warrant? And I was like... I've never done a drone warrant for sure. What the hell? I'll try it. And so I wrote up a drone warrant, got it done, did full surveillance of the property. We were able to figure out who the players were, got another warrant, went in, served it. Um, we got like 300 knives from the property, an AK-47, um, loaded AK-47, several machine guns. What? Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did. The sheriff took the machine guns and AK-47, but I took all the cockfighting stuff. Um, and then I did another warrant for the cell phones and the computers that we seized off the people to go ahead and get into those. So that's what I love about this job is like 20 years into it. And it's still like, boom, something brand new. I got to figure out. You know, so cool. you know, so uh, I, I need to uh, really highlight you about this drone stuff because um, a, how did you find, okay. A, did you have case law where you can use it? D, did you refer that law to which you're going to use? And how did you get the criteria for the property on the height so, yeah, so um, honestly, I have no expertise in drone surveillance, so I talked to a, a detective at the sheriff's office who's, like, on the drone team. Um, he gave me a template warrant on how to do it, and so I kind of just, like, filled in my stuff. Um, 
his warrant that he had done was looking for a particular person. Mm -hmm. So on his warrant, it had it included like a radius with a latitude and longitude and a circle around it. Mm -hmm. Um, For my warrant, we knew the exact uh, parcel number, so we just put the parcel numbers on it. Um, As far as the height, honestly, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I can forward you a copy of the warrant. Um, I'll obviously have to redact because because I know the height's in there. I just don't remember what it is off the top of my head. No, no, just uh, your, yeah, yeah, just just uh, even even just a, a, a regular format because you know I always get that question and I'm always like this. I don't know case law on it, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, once yeah. case law is established, I'm like this. Okay, that's that's you know that's the tool. You say okay, and then you try to find the you know the detective and who lieutenant who okayed it and see what the judge says and stuff like that. Because I know there's no um, uh, uh, submissions of uh, privacy. At a certain height, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I know expectation of privacy. I know at a certain height, you're like, you know, it is what it is. But I know, like, yep. you know, legally you can have a fence so high, you know what I'm saying, like that. So I was just wondering. Yep. And then um, the drone, I mean, how, matter of fact, we're talking, since we're talking, um, what type of drones they have and how long does they have? 20 minutes? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it was up there for about an hour. Uh, what? It's, it's, again, this is like the first time I've ever, ever done anything like this. And it was it was pretty effing yeah, cool, pretty fucking. I mean, you curse on your podcast, of course, of course. Okay, <laughs> it, was pretty, it was pretty fucking cool to get the drone footage and like see my suspect just sitting there drinking coffee, talking on his cell phone, and like the other suspect like feeding the the, the fighting roosters and stuff. And then uh, the way it's able to zoom in, it zoomed in on this area of the property that I was never able to see, mm-hmm. and it was covered by tarps. And I was like, guarantee you, the pit's right under those tarps. And so, sure enough, as soon as we ended up executing our search warrant, that's where the pit was. A bunch mm-hmm. of dead birds outside of it, you know. So it's. It was. It's pretty. The drone thing is pretty badass, and now that I know how to use it, um, I'm probably going to start using it for more cockfighters. Oh, but uh, uh, I mean, we, I, I, I know where a ton of cockfighting properties are. I've just never been able to get the PC to get onto them. But that drone footage is going to give me that PC. So yeah, yeah, like you said, because um, you know, the guru out there is a uh, the retired uh, HSUS, you know, instructor, and um, you know, Miss Thing Eric Sackage, and you know. Eric Eric goes back and everything. I would I would love to ask him. Did he ever use a drone? Like my internet like that? slowed down again. Oh, not a problem. You mean uh, repeat that, or you good? Yeah, you're you're my, my I think my internet's bad. It just slowed down a little bit there, but you're back now. No problem. No, but I was like uh, Eric Sackett from you know um um for oh, yeah. you know you know he he's God you know. And uh, I had him on, and we called it the, the lawnmower episode. I had a lawnmower going okay. behind the whole audio and everything, and we just kept going. Yeah. We just kept going. We started laughing yeah. about it. Um, another one is, what's your favorite movie or book? Book. You know, it's funny. I um, I don't read very often, but I, I just went into the a bookstore yesterday and bought this book. It's called The End of Policing. Oh. Um, and the problem is not police training methods or police diversity or police methods. The problem is dramatic and unprecedented expansion and intensity of policing in the last 40 years, a fundamental shift in the role of police in society. The problem is policing itself. So I just started reading this, and it's all about, you know, kind of how over the last 40 years, you know, the police have really gone from, you know, being those guardians of society to really, you know, just to um, enforcers. And, you know, it's one of my big things that, that I think I'm probably known for in the animal care control world is really doing proactive community policing. Um, and getting this book last night and starting to read it, you know, I can't say it's my favorite book because I just started reading it, but... Uh, you know, I'm really into sociology and really understanding, you know, society as a whole and how it works. And, you know, I think most people who listen to your podcast are probably familiar with what a lot of police have been doing over the past few years, you right. know, to, especially right. for people of color. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not been good. Um, and, and I really, I don't think it really is like there's a bad person or a bad apple in the police force. I think it really is policing itself or, or animal control itself where the, 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 um, the, the culture behind the policing is what's causing all these problems, you know, yeah. and so uh, you just, know, kind of getting to that root core and saying, right. like, police officers should never should no longer pull over people just because of a broken taillight. Like, you know, like, they, they, they just let those small crimes go um, and start dealing with the bigger stuff. And if someone runs, don't chase them. Um, and this is probably a topic for a whole nother conversation, but it's kind of. I'm excited to see it, to see the conversation opening up, at, you know, in, in a large scale in society. So, so I just had um, my boss, Melly Ti, John Warden, on, and I did. I think I said the evolution of policing, right? And yep. you know, he yep. he, he was a, a, a cop for like 22 years at uh, Columbia Police, and then he's you know over um, a law enforcement training institute up you know in um, Columbia, Missouri, and the stuff how it used to be to how it is and how it's going because I think it was a big pushback. 
during the last three or four years, there's been a lot of pushback on what you can, what you can't do, what we used to do, and what are we going to do. And then officers are stuck, that I've seen, are stuck second-guessing what they should do versus what they're going to get in trouble for, or they don't know what to do. They don't know when to shoot. They kind of know what to shoot, but they don't know when to shoot, okay? And it's like a double jeopardy, damn to do, damn if they don't. And then the escalation of the uh, disrespect is at an all-time high. Uh, I think that's what law enforcement, period. Whereas before, and I, I believe in community of policing. All right, so what I was saying before, you know, a little technical, um, it's one of these things where I believe in community of policing, but maybe we should take another word and replace it with policing. Since that's kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because um, yeah. the optics right now on policing are not good. So, and even enforcing, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? You know, to be kind of a little gentler. And don't get me wrong. I get what, you know, police say. Now, another thing I want, I want to piggyback on was the minor crimes, because they don't get punished for the minor crimes, do they lead to more brazen and uh, uh, more crimes going going forward? I don't know if there's been a study. I have no idea. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. it's one of those things where it's like, uh, okay, if because you, you don't if you don't correct a bad habit, it'll get worse. And so, so my son was notorious for not writing tickets for very minuscule stuff. All right. But he would light you on fire if he would see a um, man or woman in a car and have a child without a child seat. Okay. So, you know, he would just light you up. Okay. Everything else, it is, you know, it's a little bit different because like the marijuana laws are way different from state to state. And I think, I know you have state rights and everything, but sometimes I, I think, it should be across the board, um, control substances A, B, or classify A, B for everybody. So you don't have, you know, um, like gun laws. It should be the same thing everywhere. It should, you know what I'm saying? So I, I think it would be better for us going forward for enforcing uh, different infractions of, you know, bad stuff and good stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I mean, I agree. I mean, I don't think, you know, we should just be turning blind eyes to like certain crimes and certain things. I think. My whole thing is more, you know, just, you know, I think kind of the way policing in, in a lot of urban environments, you know, kind of how they've gotten away with a lot of stuff over years. And again, I have a lot of friends who are police and I work with the police, obviously, on a daily basis. So I'm not bashing the police. You know, I, right. I have full respect. Right. Um, you know, but kind of the, the broken windows theory of, you know, hey, there's a taillight out. Let's pull that person over and maybe we'll find more. Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of thing really does disproportionately, you know, affect, you know, people who are living in poverty, people of color, um, you know, and it really does, um, you know, it's, it's more, you know, and it's, it's like with the marijuana laws, you know, you kind of look and, and you see where, you know, some of the marijuana laws are getting expunged and you're seeing who's getting, you know, their, um, their records, you know, expunged because they're getting rid of the marijuana laws. It's disproportionately people of color and people living in poverty. Right. You know, so that's kind of what I'm getting at more in that. And, um, you know, obviously I'm a white dude, you know, so it's not like I'm, you know, like fighting for, for, for quote unquote my people, whatever. I'm just fighting for humans in general. Right. Um, and what's fair for everybody and what's fair for, um, you know, so that people aren't targeted just because of, of minor things based on where they live or, you know, what color their skin is. Well, you know, the thing is, I always say, like, um, I'm an independent. I'm a, I vote independently, uh, period. Yep. You know, say I'm, um, I'm very conservative with a lot of things. Um, I'm, I'm <clears throat> slightly liberal with some things. But um, overall, okay. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just a regular independent and I vote on the um, constituents of my community. Uh, what's good yep. for them because you know I don't have young kids anymore all right so yep. um, I don't pay I just don't pay attention to a few things the schools do stuff like this because I just don't have young kids anymore um, and then I don't live next to my grandkids you know I'm trying to fix so I'm getting elderly so I kind of worry about that stuff the one thing about I uh, say DC they uh, they treat their elderly very very well very very well um, the taxes yep. and stuff like that is astronomical. And then um, I think D.C. should be a state. I doubt it will ever become one in my lifetime. But, um, you know, I think like everything as far as the laws and as far as animal cruelty laws, it's, again, I think it should be the same everywhere, even though, mm -hmm. you know, something is a little different, like a tethering law. Uh, I said it a few times like that. I 
believe you can tell their animal correctly for a few hours correctly, supervised and what have you. Uh, some people would say no tethering at all. I think that's you know subjective, and I think that's to me not a good approach. What do you think? Yeah, no, I mean, the, I, I kind of like the California tethering law, where it's like a three-hour uh, rule. Okay. Um, you know, where it, it, it exempts you know people who are camping or people who are you know out doing certain things, and, and it really focuses on the animal that's living on that tether twenty-four-seven. Um, and you know, I know when the first when the law was first passed, you know, a lot of officers were like, "This is ridiculous. How are we going to prove it's three hours? You know, this and that." And it's easy. Like you can tell when an animal's living on a chain twenty-four-seven. Right. Just big tonneau. Right. That's. Um, you know, and in that cockfighting uh, case I just talked about that we did last week, we ended up taking 12 dogs off the property as well. Every single one of those dogs were emaciated, you know, chained up. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, so it's, it's part of what we're using against these folks. You know, not only are we getting them on the cockfighting, but we're going to get them on the illegal tethering and the emaciated dogs, you know. So I, I, I think tethering laws are great. Um, I think when you include the tethering law, though, like there really should be a component to it where it says the animal, if it's, on like a runner system or a trolley system, yes. that it has to be on a harness, not a collar. Because yeah. I've seen dogs choke out and die even on runners or trolleys just because they have the, the collar on. So yeah. I think there needs to be that harness section. And like I, I like the um, uh, collar, I'm sorry, harness versus collar, stuff like that, uh, to minimize any type of stress or stuff like that if the animal does get tangled up. Because, you know, um, exactly. <clears throat> where I used to work um, a long time ago in Georgia, it was a tethering law where we said, hey, the dog can be out here for a little while like that, but you have to have a, 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 a first barrier. The second barrier, you know, or, uh, or control system is the tethering, but you have to have a fence. A lot of people don't have a fence. So even if the dog gets loose, it can't get out the fence, you know. So yep. there's a lot of, and then some people can't afford and cannot. But the thing is, for the animal to get exercise, I think the animal should be okay. There's some people yep. um, I've seen in the south, I don't know about the north, but in the south, they're like, no tethering at all. I'm like, dude, everybody don't have a fenced in yard and everybody can't walk the dog 24-7. Even though, to yep. me, that's what you should do with a pet, you know what I'm saying, and not just a dog, you know? Yep. But, but, but again, it goes back to the thing of, like, our beliefs, like, aren't the laws. So we kind of have to, we have to, we have to work with the community we have. And, and one of the things we do is we actually provide free runner slash trolley systems to people who live in poverty. Really? Um, who, like, have that dog that's chained up and don't, and, like, you know, they're like, hey, I can't afford a fence or I can't afford a trolley, you know, like just take the dog. We're like, no, we don't want your dog. Like, here's this free thing. Let us help you set it up. And then we set the trolley up for them so that the dog stays in the home. And, um, okay. So, so how do you quantify that and what type of, do you, did you, do you get grants for that or it just comes out the budget? We do. So my original grants, uh, probably about 10 years ago, I got a grant from the ASPCA for like 25 grand, which bought a ton of runners. <laughs> um, and so we were able to document each one we gave out and, you know, how often the animals got impounded back in or, you know, future neglect complaints. I mean, it was all just data that we, you know, put into the community database system. And we were able to kind of show that those animals weren't coming into the shelter, that they were remaining with the house, that they were staying at the house. Um, and so our we have a nonprofit that works with us called the Friends of Santa Cruz Animal Shelter, you know, they liked all the data on it, so now they buy us runners every, like, six months, and, and as we run out, to buy us more. So, okay. So, I'm, I'm writing stuff down because it's good stuff, man. Really good stuff. What's called, yeah. um, what was your most interesting case you had over the years? I know you have tons, but what was the kind of weird okay. one that sticks out? Man, I, you know, there's <laughs> – in 20 years of doing this, because, you know, California is a little bit different in, in things. It's like we're full peace officers out here, so, you know, we have the full – of arrest, full powers of warrants, um, all that stuff. So, you know, we, we see the full nitty gritty out here. And, and um, two, two I'm, I'm thinking of two that really stick out. And um, even on my, my warrant the other day, one of the deputies came up to me. And he's like, you know, I was on a call with you about 15 years ago, and it still sticks out in my mind. And, and that call was for it was for a guy living up in, in the mountains of Santa Cruz who was um, he was trying to breed. Um, the most aggressive dog you could find. And so he was breeding Cane Corsos with Rottweilers, with Dobermans, with, with all sorts of just gnarly dogs. And by the time we got the warrant for his property, once we finally got the PC to get on there, um, he had over like 150 dogs on this property. And then a uh, majority of them were pregnant. So it, it, we ended up having to write, I think, 10 or 15 different search warrants mm-hmm. for that property because we couldn't collect the dogs each day and we didn't want to keep the property open overnight. So we'd like shut down at night, come back the next day with another warrant. Um, and every day we would come back to the property, 
the guy would have, have gone on in the middle of the night, killed a dog, cut off its head, stuck it on a stake at the front door. Um, the another day he came and he hung up all these dog paws all over the fence. Um, and then interviewing him later and then in court, you know, he kind of stated that he was trying to keep the, the evil spirits away, which is why he was killing the dogs and putting up their heads and putting up their, their paws. And the evil spirits were basically myself and the sheriff's department. That's who he was trying to keep out. Um, so that was an interesting case, and, and he represented himself in court. Yep. Um, it was a jury, jury trial. Um, I was on the stand for probably seven, eight days, <laughs> just having him, you know, ask me the most bizarre questions. Um, you know, he was ultimately convicted of a lot of felonies and lost his property, lost all his dogs. Um, but that was definitely a, a, a very interesting case. You know, um, you know, the, I, the other interesting. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. So you know, I, I love the um, the juju he was trying to use, and um, exactly. did he did he did he claim um, Santeria? Or did he claim a particular you know a uh, religion, or he just you know was just BSing? It, I, you know, I don't think it was a particular. I mean, it, it wasn't a particular religion. I, I really think. I mean, I think he was. I mean, I hate to say it, but he was a little cuckoo. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think he truly believed that you know put that up and keep us away. Okay. Okay. And was, obviously didn't. Coming back, <laughs> it didn't work. Oh no, no, no! I mean, when you know, well, that's 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 another conversation. That's the, what, what was your other example? <laughs> oh yeah, so my, so we have a lot of crazy people here in Santa Cruz. There's a lot of a lot of drugs and a lot of mental illness and a lot of you know. You were mentioned conservative versus liberal. It's a very very liberal place. So there's a lot of a lot of homeless, um, or as, as we're calling them now, the houseless. Um, and um, there was one woman. Uh, recently within the past year or two that I dealt with who ended up uh, killing her dog. So we were able to determine through necropsy that she had slit the dog's throat. So it was a little like three pound Yorkie and she fully embalmed it inside of like a, she put it inside a Tupperware container, wrapped it up in a jacket, put it inside a unicorn dog bed and then fully plastered the unicorn dog bed or unicorn cat bed into like a full size head with like the little ears poking out laminated the entire outside of it with Bible verses and then hung it from her shower curtain. And so when she was getting, she was getting arrested by the police on some completely unrelated matter. And she's going, pickles is in the head. Pickles is in the Bible verses. And pickles is the dog. you know, pickles is in the head. Pickles is in the Bible verses. And so they called me. They're like, we think her dog's in that head. Um, so we, we seize the head for eggs and circumstances like, Hey, the dog can still be alive. Brought it to, um, Brought it to the vet. The vet x-rayed it. The vet's like, yeah, there's a dead animal in there, but it's dead. Um, you know, so then we had to get a search warrant to open up the, the Plaster Paris dog head. Um, the dog ended up having a microchip. And so I called the woman who's associated with the microchip, and she's like, oh, yeah, you know, I gave I gave the dog away to this woman the other day who was really strange. She was talking about, like, ink, ink coming out of the walls and, like, bugs everywhere, and, and she wasn't making a lot of sense. And the really weird thing was – there was a man who appeared homeless standing on the porch the entire time she was at my house, and that homeless man had a hamster in his hand, and he was petting the hamster the entire time with one finger. I thought it very strange. <laughs> and so then I told the lady what happened with Pickles, and she's like, oh, my God, is there anything I, I could have done differently in the future? And it was the one time I ever lost my cool with a person. I said, ma'am, the next time you have some crazy motherfucker in your house... <laughs> Telling you about ink poured out of the walls and bugs climbing all over the floor, and she has brought with her a homeless man petting a hamster on the front doorstep. Don't give him your fucking dog. You <laughs> it was the only time I ever lost my soul. Yeah, my yeah oh, I mean, but, oh, that, was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, the FBI would call that a clue. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's a fucking clue. I'm like, I'm like, you know? dude, dude. That, now that's now, now that was bizarre, bro. I ain't gonna lie. That, yep. That's that's easy top five for me. That's that's yep. bizarre. That's bizarre. Well, and the best thing is, is the homeless man with the hamster ended up getting arrested about a week later for like drugs or something. And we ended up impounding this hamster. I was like, it's a fa- small fucking town. <laughs> Here's the hamster. <laughs> How, so, what's the population in your town about? So, the entire county is about three hundred thousand. Um, okay. And then my, my department, we serve all the cities as well as the counties. So, okay. Um, we serve the city of Santa Cruz, which has about sixty thousand. City Capitola, which is about 10,000. City Scotts Valley, another 10,000. And then Watsonville, um, it's probably about 60, 70,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... So, and and one, one of the great things about Santa Cruz and working here is just the diversity we have. Like, 
down in Watsonville, it's a very uh, Mexican immigrant population. So we, you know, we have we have we have that particular demographic that we work with. Then the city of Santa Cruz is you're either rich or you're a hippie or you're homeless. You're, you're one of the three. <laughs> so we're dealing with that population. Then up in the mountains, we have like what we call the mountain folk, who are like you know the big anti-government. Um, conspiracy. Oh, not sovereign exactly. citizens. Not conspiracy sovereign conspiracy. citizens, bro. Not sovereigns. Oh, we got sovereign citizens, my friend. We got them. <laughs> bro, let me tell you. And it's this uh, episode, uh, again, 67. I'm on with Ty Stosi. And uh, we um chopping it. We were really chopping this up. We were really chopping this up. I appreciate this. Uh, sovereigns, mm-hmm. uh, I've dealt with a few. I dealt with the, um, the black Moorish ones and the militant ones. Um, they are a um, they are pickle. They are uh, mm-hmm. a weird pickle. And um, you got to mm-hmm. be extremely, what you say, vigilant. You have to really know what you're doing, you know? Yep. Yep. What you call it? Um, next one is favorite food to cook or eat? I love Thai food. Um, really? I, I can't cook it. I, I definitely don't have the ability to cook it, but I will eat Thai food for every meal if I could. It is so good. We, uh, I, I went out to um, Vancouver and we had some, because I didn't know Vancouver is like 78% Asian. Oh, I didn't know that either. No, bro, bro. I went up there and everything. Uh, if you like sushi, oh, they got sushi for days, okay? And they got all types of Asian cuisine and what have you. And um, I went up there um, to get away, just to recharge. And I uh, had a good time. Uh, we didn't, didn't have a, a car or nothing like that. We just, you know, did the bus and everything, the bus and train and everything. Hands down, one a very beautiful city. Very everybody's polite. Very very polite. They have a, like a homeless uh, 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 skid row type of thing for about maybe uh, roughly about eight blocks. Other than that, very nice, very nice. You know, uh, and we I had Thai food one night. Hands down, I don't know what it was. I just know it was number eighty eight. And um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And I got it. I got yeah. it with like. Two or three little uh, peppers, you know, you know the little markers, how hot you want it, and it has some um, curry, coconut milk in it, and stuff like that. Bruh, bruh, this is so good. <laughs> I was like, what? I like Thai. I like Thai. I like Thai. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, okay, since the name of the uh, show is "Don't Fuck Up the Crime Scene," have you ever messed up a crime scene? Yeah, you know, can't, <laughs> I can't say I can't say I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> If you do it long um, enough, if you do it long enough, you know, yeah. you, you're going to have some fall through the cracks or just say, damn, yeah, I should have did this, yeah, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, well, if you, if, and, and I can't talk about it, but if you, if you Google my name, I have a current federal lawsuit against me. Oh. Yeah, yeah in my shelter, it's like against the shelter of myself and my previous boss. I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. you no, know. I can't talk about it. No, 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 no. We good. We good. But you can Google my name. You can talk about it. Okay. Okay. All right. But um, yeah, I um, yeah, I messed up a case where um, it was a, a sexual assault case, and you know, I wasn't, I was, just, I was maybe I was just going too fast. Instead of getting all the um, toys, I got like two or three toys. I left the other ones. I suppose that you know got all the toys. You know. And um, the dog was in shock. That's the first time I've ever seen a dog, like, how it was reacting after having, you know, a force, forcible sex and, like, looked like it was, it was raped. And um, that was weird. That was really weird because the dog was, like, looked like it was in shock. You know, it was all curled mm-hmm. up in a ball and stuff like that. And, um, you know, this is one of the time. It was good, you know, a good ending. Um, the animal was um, turned over, you know. And uh, it took about maybe 48 hours to 72 hours. The dog, <laughs> the dog kind of, like, came back. It's like... You know, came out of shock or what have you like this, and uh, but they used so much lube on it that it didn't leave any um, vaginal or anal um, scarring inside, you know. Mm-hmm. And then um, you know, but but I I have oh I have messed up some cases, and I, but you learn from it, you know. I have really, so what, what so, so so what what was the problem with not getting all the toys? What, what did you what, what did you lose on it? Uh, well, the thing is, they said I should get all the toys stuff like that um, on the evidence collection. Uh, because some toys are used, why didn't I take these and why did I leave these? You know. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like um, when you do an impound. I'm sorry. When you have a, a seizure, when you're going to seize one or two dogs for um, you know emaciation, but you're going to leave the healthy ones. You can't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. So exactly. it, it was you know like it was something like that. It wasn't fruit of the poison tree by any means, but it was just you know. Because if if it went to trial, they was like it would question me on that, and I you know kind of messed that up. And it was a few other times I messed yeah. up. 
you know. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we, we we all make mistakes. You know, I mean, it's it's. I mean, it is what it is. You know, it, it's you know again the, the the one I mentioned with myself with the federal lawsuit. That's I don't think there's some merit on parts of it. Um, there probably is some merit on other parts of it. But again, it's 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 mistakes that people make, and um, you know we all do it. You know, and it's it's as long as we're not out there like intentionally right. doing something wrong. Right. You know, a mistake is a mistake. So. With, with things like this, I try to tell people exclusionary things and as far as um, good faith. If you're out there yep. doing everything on good faith, it's good faith. If you messed up, you just messed yep. up. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But you didn't go exactly. after, you know, you didn't, it was no intentional. Okay? Um, no, and then it's how you say it, it was intentional and then you had fruit of the poisonous tree. Okay? And, um, you know, it's exactly. totally, totally, so I understand that. That's a good point. A very good point. Um, yep. Yep. Question for you. Uh, favorite place to visit or vacate? Ooh, um, man, I, you know, I, I, I kind of settled down over the past couple of years. I, I'm, I'm getting married this year and, and my girlfriend's got a, got a kid. So I kind of settled down. Okay. Uh, but prior to that, I was a traveling monster, man. I went to India for two months. I went to Peru for two months. Okay. Um, I, I love international travel. I love immersing myself in other cultures. Right. Um, you know, especially like India, just going there, it is, that place would just blow your fucking mind. <laughs> when you walk into Mumbai and there's just like a million people just stand there and you're like, holy shit. And then the, the poverty and then the, the opulence in some places and just, um, you know, I, I went to some villages where I was probably the only white person within like, you know, a hundred miles. Mm -hmm. And I go into these little villages and people would just like welcome me in and, and you know, they had, they had never seen uh, a <laughs> video recording of themselves. And so like they would, they would play me a song and I'd film, film them playing the song and then show it to them. And they were just like so amazed. Um, you know, they had, they had never actually seen themselves on video before. Um, adults and kids, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's mind blowing when you kind of immerse yourself in these other places that, you know, get out of America and just really, um, see what the rest of the world is like. It's, it's, yeah, it's, you know, addictive. it's very, addictive. well, what's you call it? Cause, um, I plan to, um, vi um, uh, retire abroad. Okay. When I finally okay. do retire. Nice. So, um, I like, I like Asia. I like Malaysia. Um, oh, Malaysia's beautiful. You know, beautiful. I, I like um, what's it? Uh, uh, Vietnam. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like a few, a few places. That, now, a is certain things. You know, you can't buy any property over there for the most part. Some some places, but uh, in Vietnam, yeah. I don't. I don't think they allow you to buy anything out there. But um, uh, I, I want to go to Thailand. I want to see how's that. I want to go to um, what's the other one? Um, Bali. Want to do the Bali thing? Bali. Yeah, and then yep. um. But what I'll probably settle is so I'm close to the grandkids and family and stuff like that. I'll probably go to South America. Um, okay. So yeah, yeah. We're looking at um, mainly Ecuador. Uh, Cuenca is a little colder, you know, the mountains, stuff like that. Um, yeah. I thought about Colombia, Medellin, um, you know, I, I, you know, I, a few places, in, but I got to see. And then I like, yeah. uh, what's the other one over there? It's like three or four of them over there. But, I, I've heard Costa Rica is a, a good one. Well, I like Costa Rica. I like uh, Nicaragua pretty pretty well. Um, Honduras, nah, I'll pass. But um, yeah. Sal, Salvador, El Salvador, I kind of you know I'm looking at that and everything um, because you know as far as the money, uh, our money going over there goes a long way. You know. Yep. Yep. So you so know. So when are you planning on Aaron? Um, I'm trying to debate 62, 63, 64. I don't think I'm going to make it okay. to 67, um, you know, okay. for our social security and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I'm doing my best to have uh, multiple streams come in now so I can just, you know, relax. And, and I don't need them. Todd, I don't need a lot. I just don't need a lot. Uh, and yeah, then, do you know, <laughs> good food over there, good people, immerse yep. yourself, learn a language, learn the cultures. And, um, yep. you know, and life is pretty good, you know. And don't get me wrong. Love me some America. And I've been all around America, as you are, and uh, you're know, like um, I'm supposed to go to uh, Navajo Nation maybe end of this year, and I'm gonna stay with my my homie down there and uh, go on the res on the res for a few days because I've been to like two reservations and it's different. It's a different way of life. <clears throat> yep. But um, I like New Mexico a little bit. I've been to Las Cruces, Amelin Gordo. I've been you know I've been all down there. I haven't been um, Rio Doso, so I haven't been up there. But uh, I, I like it out there. Is it Cali? I've never been to California, man. Not one time. Oh, you, 
I got you can stay in my house if you ever make it out here. Bro, same thing. You come to DC, man. You come to DC. Got you. Right. Got you, bro. All right. Because uh, you know, uh, sharing sharing is caring, bro. The, exactly. You know the funny thing is is how you're mentioning your your you know sixty two, sixty four, sixty seven retirement like. When, when you first invited me on your podcast, I kind of, you know, we're friends on Facebook, and so I was kind of looking at your Facebook page, and, yeah. and then, you know, my girlfriend and her kid were kind of looking at your photos, and we thought you were in, like, your 30s or 40s. Yeah, right, right, I, we, I wish. We went to the notebook, yeah, we went through the notebook of the podcast thing and saw Rich Heap, we're like, he's been in this for 28 years? Yeah. Wait a minute, how old is this motherfucker? He's like 30. Yeah. You look like your my friend. Uh, no, no, my brother, no, but like I said, I snap, crackle, and pop, I'm the Black Rice crispy. okay? Uh, brother, uh, no, and life is hard. But the thing is, um, my father aged very, very, very well. Very, very, very well. Uh, for, for us, how he looked. He didn't make it past 54. But, um, he, you know, you know, no, 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 no. Everybody, <laughs> my family kind of like checks out pretty soon. But um, I'm, tr- I'm trying to be the, uh, uh, you know, uh, a different strand. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get my, uh, my vampirism uh, mortality, immortality, you know? Cause yep. I'm a big uh, movie guy. Uh, question for: Are you are you a great teammate? A great teammate? Yeah. Uh, you know, I you know it's that whole <laughs> silly saying of there's no I in team. So I think, but yeah, I fully agree with that. Like I, you know, I'm I'm I lead by example. You know, I've been I've been leading a team of officers for years, and and I got to say, my current team that I have now is is probably the best team I've ever had. No offense to previous officers I've employed, but um, they really get the team mentality and and and. And like I may be their leader, but I also like work on the team with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we did that search warrant last week on that cockfighting property, it was like we got there. You know, the sheriff goes in, clears the scene, make sure there's no bad, other bad people on the property. And then we come in, and it was like I assigned each one of them their their thing. It was like, okay, we got to do the dogs first. You know, you're gonna be the dog catcher, you're the dog photographer, you're the sketcher, and they're kind of doing their thing. And then you know, I'm not just standing there as a leader, like watching them. I'm I'm in there with them. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go and pound these dogs and kind of work with them that way, and then. You know, once the dogs were impounded and one officer took him to get bed care, um, you know, we start focusing on, focusing on the fighting cocks. And while they're doing the fighting cocks, I'm doing all the evidence collection. And, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think that you can survive in this, in this profession without being a team. You know, one, no one person can do everything on their own. And you got you to gotta work together. You got to work, you know, work as one unit to get the things done. You know, I, um, I was just talking to uh, Leanne and Terry um, down, Terry Mills and Leanne uh, Garrard. I know she, uh, her name's changed since so she got married. But uh, I was just talking to them um, in the ASPCA, HSUS, uh, Greater Good, and stuff like that. Um, you know, everybody talks team and stuff like that. And I try to tell people, well, you know, if you want to be on a team and learn how to be a good teammate, not so much a leader, not so much a leader, but um, do your um, incident command um, um, modules, you know, and uh, do your FEMA courses so they teach you how to be a good, you know, just a, a good, a good little Indian, and not a chief, you know. And yep. Um, yep. you know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of work. A is free, and um, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying I mean, free is good. You know, what I'm saying free is good. Mm-hmm. And then you know, mm-hmm. when you go on scene, you know what to do. You know what box to go through, stuff like that. And it's just yep. simple yep. procedures. And then your NIMS certified, yep. so you know the, when you're deployed. Your agency gets the money back because, you know, they pay up front and get the money back, reimburse like that. So, you know, and um, I don't deploy as much as I used to or send people. All I do now is uh, teach. And then um, I'm one of those that um, when I'm on scene. okay, when I used to do hoarding cases, stuff like that, the last big one I did was um, about 500 birds. Uh, And I'm not a bird guy. okay, Todd, not a bird guy, bro. And then um, we had a. 15 minute bird handling course. Now, they have some big ass birds, okay? The ones that talk to you and snap your finger off like it's nothing. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm not a bird person either. I hate birds. Bro, bro. And then, you know, because they, they poop, they drip, or they open their tail and like skeet, right? I'm not, I'm not ready for all that. I don't need no skeet in my life, yeah. right? And, exactly. um, bro, bro, it was um, 16 hours. Two engines had to um, ventilate the house, um, multiple units. Uh, it was just a long day. Three staging areas. Um, they had to have a morgue. Uh, it, it was a lot. And then the rooms. We was up to, because uh, we did we did letters. We didn't do numbers. We did like room A, room B, rooms, you know, like that. Yep. And we was up to yep, like, yep. I think J. And it was a lot of birds, you know. And then some of them would talk to you. 
Uh, they're like, hey, hello. You turn around, there's nobody there. It's a goddamn bird talking, right? And, you know, yep. we had all that stuff going. So, are you a cat person or a dog person and why? Dog. Um, <laughs> I love, you know, I, I, <laughs> I say that, I answer that quite easily. Um, definitely not a bird person. Hell no on birds. Um, but, no, I, I love, I mean, I've always, I think, since ever since I got out of college, I've had a dog. Um, you know, my my. My dog right out of college, I had him for 18 years. When he passed away, I got I have these two little dogs now, a little Chihuahua Dachshund and a little Rat Terrier. And I've kind of lucked out. You know, I, I have the kind of job where my dog comes to me to work every day. Mm-hmm. And my dog, you know, rides around with me in my vehicle. My dog sits under my desk at work. So it's like I just have my dog with me 24-7. You know, when, when I get a dog that I can't catch out in the field, I let her out. And she, like, helps bring that dog to me. And then I impound that dog. Um, you know, cats. They're, they're just too independent for me. I, I love, I, not that I need like a subservient little animal that looks up to me, but I fucking love when I leave the room for 10 minutes and come back into the dog's like, oh my God, you've been gone for I know, I know, I know. I just love that. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. Dog's like this, you're back. You're actually back, you're back you know. Back. You've been gone for so long. You know. And uh, cats are like, yeah, whatever, bro. Whatever, bro. M- motherfucker, please. Just feed me. Feed me. Yeah, exactly. Scoop my cat. litter. Give me some cat. You know, and I'm like, um, I have two cats now. I um, I had dogs in the past, and I had these dogs with these bougie names. Do not judge me. Um, one of one of my first dogs uh, was uh, I had a Rottweiler. It was a um, Sir Remington Steele after the TV show Remington Steele. And I'm um, telling my age now. And then uh, I had a uh, Porsche Blaze Diablo. I had a red Cocker Spaniel, and then I had a uh, Crimson Von Maximus. I had a red Min Pen. Then I had Tiberius Claudius Nero. It was a bull mastiff. I know, I know. I was on my Spartacus no, I, Rome stuff, man. I love the full. I love the full names. One, one of my dogs is Wabulita Mosquita Mochita. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wobbles for short. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, like I said, you know, doing this this job and everything. And oh, matter of fact, how do you avoid stress doing this job? You know, it's funny, meditation, yoga, I mean, but stress, I mean, it still gets to you. It really does, you know, but it's it's one of those things I feel like I've been doing it for so long and I've seen so much, you know, and, and prior to doing this, I was a paramedic for a number of years and, so, okay. and I saw a lot of crazy shit that way. Right. Um, I think, you know, like, and I get new people in and, and, you know, I have this one new officer who's been with me about six months and she's very, very sensitive and, um, you know, euthanasia really gets to her and, and you know, that first first week she was on the job we ended up euthanizing like six pit bulls just like one after another which is not normal for us but it was just whatever reason that week we were just putting down pit bulls like crazy Mm -hmm. and it was one of those things where i was like well if she's going to survive in this business she's got to she's got to be involved she's got to do it you know but i also don't want to like completely destroy her mentally so it's kind of like i'd have her help with the process and then afterwards we kind of talk about i'm like how are you feeling like you know what is what is you know what's coming up for you like do you need help in processing that um, and I think that's a big key is, and, and, and she's married, she has, she has a wife, um, and, and her wife is very supportive, you know, of the job. And so I think she's able to go home and have that, you know, you know, talking, talking to her partner and all that. And, and I think that's a big key is like having that, having that teammate support mm-hmm. that's going to help you because nobody knows what it's like to be an animal control officer unless you're an animal control officer. It is a weird fucking job. <laughs> oh. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're rescuing animals and then we're killing them and then we're like, people are trying to fight us and we're fighting them. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a weird freaking job. You know, um, and if you don't have the support with your teammates or support at home, like you're going to, you're going to have trouble getting through the stress. You know, um, uh, how do you feel about the, uh, and you're the first person I actually talked about this outside of Dustin. Uh, how do you feel about the new animal control show? You know, I, I personally, I do not like um, sitcoms. I think the only sitcoms I've ever enjoyed are, are Brooklyn nine, nine, and uh, Parks and Recreation, like those two, were just brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched the new Animal Control show. It's just so, so, so like um, it's, uh, hokey. If, even if I wasn't an animal control officer, I would just be like, "This is stupid." Like the characters are dumb. <laughs> like the the whole that whole ostrich thing with the carrots in his pocket that was just silly. Like it's just it's not funny. It's just kind of you know it's a pointy if that makes sense. Yeah, I. Um... I, I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> I'm just not gonna um, because you know maybe I, and maybe sometime I take our profession too serious because now we do have humor and dark humor in what we do. 
Okay, and you even mm -hmm. even 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 EMS and what have you, please. There's a lot of dark humor here. Okay, but yep. um, I think a lot of people don't know what animal control officers actually do. You know, yep. and sometimes I don't want to uh, make light of what we do. Nick, do me wrong. We find stuff funny because it is funny to us, um, but mm -hmm. we don't want to be made fun of. If that makes sense. Exactly. exactly. You know, and and I don't know. Per, I don't. You know, I don't think that they're making fun of. I mean, I've only watched one episode of it, and it didn't seem like they were making fun of animal control. It was just, it's just that whole sitcom thing, which is I just don't find the music right. Like the the, the characters are. Just, it's just like it's just so out there that it just doesn't make sense and it's just yeah i, I didn't i didn't enjoy it i don't know watch another episode yeah and I, I love joe McHale. when joe McHale used to do that uh and talk soup show way back in the day oh that was great, that was great. good that was good yeah. that was really good i mean yeah. you know like so i don't do tv <clears throat> excuse me i don't do tv like that um or if i do do tv i will binge watch something you know yep, yep. Um, a netflix stuff like that I'm a huge Marvel comic guy, stuff like that, DC comic guy. I love a good mystery, a good spy movie. Um, what was that? The Glass Onion? It was okay. Um, I like the who who done it and like that. My favorite shows back in the day was Columbo, Quincy, stuff like that, you know? Uh, I'm old school Magnum PI. I mean, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm sitting around, I like curmudgeon and stuff like that. And uh, if we go way, way back, it was um, the Nice Knocker, uh, David McGarrett with uh, Kochak. And um, I'm going. I'm dating myself again. Uh, it's just really. I mean, just horrible, corny ass episodes. But um, love them, man. I just can't get enough of them. Dude, I'm all about my my childhood was all about the E Team. B A Barakis. B A Barakis. That's right, Mr. T Serial. <laughs> remember, <laughs> remember the cartoon. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. <laughs> oh, face. Uh, 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 wait, 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 what was the crazy one name? It was Face, B.A. Baracus, uh, oh crap, I can't remember. I know. Or was it Murdoch? Murdoch, 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 Murdoch. Yeah, Murdoch. And you know, um, when they tried to bring it, I think that Liam Neeson was, um, George Papard, and, um, yep. the MMA wrestler was, um, Rampage was, um, Mr. T, and, uh, it, it wasn't bad. It, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. You know, I was like, eh, okay. I was like, okay, okay. You know, I was like, okay. But uh, hold on one second. Where I'd be in my room. Eight, where am I? 823, 823. She need to come upstairs. But um, hey, brother, I appreciate you. Uh, technical difficulties and all. Because I have so many of them half the time, okay? Uh, let's do this. And yeah. next time we'll do it. It won't be easy. Ace. I'll give you a topic. And we can actually chop it up, chop it up. And, you know, just, you know, whenever you have time, I'll just hit you up. Yeah, sounds good, man. All right, hold on. Let, let me stop this real quick. And this was episode uh, number 67. I have my friend, uh, well, hey, uh, a co-teacher out there, Todd Stosi. And uh, we're going to stop right there with him. And that's a wrap. Greatly appreciate everybody tuning in. It was a pleasure. You know, I always have fun talking my stories and all that good stuff. So, again, tune in to DFUTCS.com. Don't F with the crime scene. Holler back at you guys later.